This, number 31, is again called meditation, meditation 2, and represents a particular meditation in which the meditator finds himself disappearing entirely. He is left with no sense of himself as a separate individual at all, but the center at the base of the spine and the center at the top of the head are activated together and form between them a kind of, it feels like a steel rod, so powerful is the fire, but the image, the inner experience is as a kind of golden yellow oval, elongated oval form like that in the middle of the picture, surrounded by a field of golden light and then that light emanating out and out and out into infinity so that he or she entirely disappears from the scene but his or her consciousness continues to pervade that scene. It is a, an experience of becoming totally at one with the whole of the universe. The forms at the top and the bottom and at each side are simply elements in the picture to focus that experience. Ideally, the picture should be limitless in size. It should just go on and on to the, to the sides and up and up to the top and bottom because it represents infinity. But of course, there's no way you can do that in a painting. One has to draw the line somewhere, and the lines are, of course, drawn here by the edges of the, of the canvas. This, number 32, symbolizes that aspect of ourselves, the fire, the shakti, the fire of the earth coiled, mother nature, the fire of the female, the mother aspect, coiled at the base of the spine. By its gradual movement up through the chakras until eventually in great power it reaches the head center, enlightenment comes about. It is awakened occultly, or should be awakened occultly, by the Master in a very scientific way, coming stage by stage, circling upward, spiraling upward through the chakras prepared in advance for its reception. It is not infrequent that, infrequent when, that uh, various disciples, aspirants, ignorantly and prematurely awaken that fire by all sorts of yogic meditational methods and do themselves enormous harm. When the, this fire, potent as it is, reaches the head center before the chakras are prepared for it in advance, it receives a burst of energy which can drive the person insane. And many people ruin a complete incarnation by the premature lifting up of the kundalini fire coiled at the base of the spine. It should only be done under the supervision of a master. This number 33 is kundalini rising 2. There are three versions of this here. This represents the same fire coiled at the base of the spine and shows its, its spiraling movement up from the base of the spine until it beats with the fire of spirit gathered and centered at the top of the head. This, number 34, is Kundalini rising 3 and shows the same movement of energy from the base of the spine up through the various chakras to the top of the head to meet the fire of spirit. These are simply three versions of the same symbolic idea. This picture number 35, is called Shakti 1, and is another version, an earlier version, of the same image.
the Shakti. This, uh, this is another version of the same image called Shakti. Sh the Shakti, of course, is a Sanskrit term for the Kundalini fire charged, coiled at the base of the spine. That inner image symbolizes that coiled fire. Number 37 and number 38 represent the, the same image. They're called Cosmic Wind 1 and 2. This is Cosmic Wind 1, the first version, which throughout cosmos are great winds. Throughout our solar system are great winds. Throughout the planet are great winds. These winds have a very special role to play. In fact, there are winds traveling at enormous speeds through our solar system, which actually cool the sun. They make great paths through the sun and cool it and regulate the fires of the sun. This has to be embodied in an image and there is no way you can just show wind and paint it. Everything the painter puts on the canvas has to have a shape, has to have a color, has to have some relationship to everything else. And this is an image which by intuitively, if one arrives at these things by intuition, intuitively symbolizes the, the, the wind of cosmos in infinite space of, of cosmos, cooling down and doing its benefic beneficent work throughout cosmos. This picture is called Time Shift. It is number 39. Time shift is a little more difficult to see in this slide version. Seen in the original, it's very clear. It, it symbolizes two quite different experiences of that phenomenon we call time. Time really doesn't exist except in the physical brain. We imagine that time is a succession of events by which we measure out our life and experience. But as time is for the masters, really something entirely different. It is really a succession of waves of activity followed by waves and periods of inactivity, on and on infinitely. The image here acts by looking, if you look along the edges of the forms, that you see at one moment two blue forms linked together by a kind of horizontal rod which seems to move from left to right across the picture against a red background. Look again. Look at the red now. And you see a red frame through which you're looking at a blue infinite space. That blue infinite space is the true nature of time. The blue forms moving across the picture on the red background is our purely physical brain notion, quite erroneous, of time. That's why it's called time shift. 